So I know many of you have seen a um, conversation, a live conversation that me and Royce Five Nine had pertaining to Vlad TV and his misquote of Minister Farrakhan and him posting it. And um, we had a difference of opinion. Floyd, I mean Royce said that um, he was he needed the minister to apologize, you know, and he needed to make a public apology. My position was, well, for me, all he needed to do was take down the misquote and clarify that the minister never said that. Because for me, an apology is an emotional statement. It's something that you feel. And if a person doesn't feel something, I don't want an apology from you if you don't really actually believe that. So we went back and forth and we had a difference of opinion. You know, and based on that ideology, that's how I believe. That's me. I'm not going to apologize for something that I don't feel I should apologize for. And you can't force me into an apology. Now, you will, you can do what you feel, but you can't force a person into an apology. If I right the wrong, if I crash your car and I go, you know, and, and pay you the money, whether I apologize or not, the right is wrong. You know, if somebody says something directly, if words come out your mouth directly and you say, yo... My son is a listen, I'll him up. Those are your words. You're not misquoting somebody else. You're not stating somebody else. You have to, only way you can write that wrong as a man is if you apologize or you do what you said. You know, the only way to, to write that wrong is to make a public apology. So I didn't think a public apology was warranted for somebody misquoting something someone else said. That just was my opinion, you know. So a lot of people didn't share that opinion. And that was based off when I had a conversation with Vlad, you know, he, he, he came to me and he said, I didn't never see the full clip. You know, I want to, I want to rectify the situation. I'm going to post, you know, a video. Um, I'm going to post a statement saying that, you know, that we didn't, we, we, you know, we practice to be authentic and we report things accurately. And we posted something about the minister that wasn't accurate. And I'm going to take the statements down. He said, you know, I don't really feel like I want to apologize because people are trying to force me into apology. And, you know, right now I'm not in a, a place to apologize because I feel like even though I'm I'm taking this down and I, and I don't want to misquote him, I feel like he said things during that interview and other interviews that, you know, were harmful and disrespectful to me as an individual. So I don't feel like I'm ready to apologize. And I said, I can respect that as a man if that's how you feel. But you just can't misquote him. That just was my position. So, as things continued to go on with the situation, there's different information. Then he had a conversation with Royce 5'9", in which he told Royce that um, my son told him he didn't have to apologize, which was not accurate. You know, it was, it was definitely not accurate. What I told him, man, is it would be ideal if you made an apology, but I'm not going to force you to apology. But you have to take down that post, and you have to make sure that people know that those wasn't the minister's statements. So, that's what happened. So he also told him something about giving me money, which was completely false. Over a 12 year friendship, Vlad has loaned me money. I, you know, I probably was short for some shit happened to my car. I called Vlad, yo, I'm in a situation. I need an extra such and such. I got you. Oh, yo, I need an extra such. Probably two times this happened in a 12 year relationship as a friendship, because this is my friend. But that wasn't relayed in the comments. So all types of things got convoluted. And um, people just started to equate me siding quote unquote with Vlad because he gives me money and he's my friend. Of course he's my friend. You know, I, if somebody's my friend, I'm going to, especially if I know the things that they're saying about you, I haven't experienced, you know, for years, people talk about his website and all of those, th those things. I get it. The blog she already told him I don't really like his website, you know, but that's neither here nor there, but there were certain things that they were saying that I didn't agree with. You know, I personally connected him with the NOI. And he's done interviews with them. He's, you know, he's had security with them. They've had a, a, they had a relationship. So when people say there was a preconceived hate for the minister, I, I don't agree that I've never seen it. I've had a conversation with him about the minister in which he told me that he, he wanted to interview him and he thought he was, you know, somebody was for the culture and, and things of that nature. I've never heard him say anything negative about the minister in my 12 years. Somebody might have a different experience, but I've never heard one. So that brings me to where we are now. So I had a conversation with Vlad, you know, after the Royce 
you know, prior to the Royce conversation, you know, and as I replayed the conversation, and I listened to Lord Jamal and Godfrey's video that they posted up. And there was one thing that got me, you know, he said, and he said it to me too, and I wasn't even thinking about it. You know, he said that his business has not been affected. You know, he, he, he made a reference to Nick Cannon and said, you know, Nick apologized because his money was affected. People apologize for two reasons, because either they, they generally feel like they want to apologize or their money is affected. So listening to Lord Jamal saying, he said, well, we had the best month. Vlad TV has had the best month. And that right there was something that didn't sit well with me, you know. Um, you know, when when I stood by his decision, his own personal decision not to make an apology, I thought it was based on integrity, that nobody's going to force you into an apology. You know, you, you righted the wrong, and nobody can force you into an apology. But now, after listening to, the, you know, what he said to the Lord Jamal and running back what he said to me, he is willing to make an apology if his money is affected. You understand what I'm saying? It means that if the people he worked for and he's doing business with decide, yeah, you need to make an apology because it's going to affect your bottom line, then he would make an apology. But the people who supported you, such as myself, Lord Jamal, Godfrey, people who you call friends and we called you friends and we willing to stand by you, you know, because I'm loyal to a fault. That's the person I am. If you're my friend, then I'm going to ride with you. That's just who I am. Win, lose, or draw. We're going to fight when we get home, but I'm going to ride with you. I'm going to call you out when you do some bullshit. I'm going to say it's wrong, but I'm going to ride with you as long as I know that your intentions are genuine and they're based on integrity. And that's why my hat says integrity over income. So when you start to say, well, my money is not affected and Vlad TV has had the best month it's ever had, then I realized that we, we, we morally conflict because I was standing by a man who was making a decision based on integrity. I was standing by a man who said he was willing to deal with whatever came with the backlash, you know? But I realized you just willing to lose us black people, us black friends you have, us black supporters, us black anybody, rather than lose the business. Because of the white man that you work with, who was cutting your checks, decided, yo, you gotta make an apology, you would make that apology, because it would affect your bottom line. So that means that you're willing to sacrifice black people. You're not willing to sacrifice your money. You're willing to sacrifice your black fans and your black friends and everything. You're willing to put us in positions that we stand by you as long as it doesn't affect your money. That's something that I, that I morally conflict with. And as a man, I can't stand by that, you know? And I, and I realize I'm loyal to a fault, but I understand the line where you draw with friendship because my integrity means everything. Like people tell you, yeah, I went to jail for seven years because I wouldn't tell somebody else to do the crime. That's how I am. I'm built like that. It's not a soldier. I think that's a general's mentality. I'm willing to deal with whatever comes with being involved with something. If I'm in the streets, I'm going to abide by the laws of the streets. When I'm not in the streets, I'm going to abide by the laws of whatever, you know, institution that I get involved with because I'm wholehearted. This is who I am. I deal with integrity. I deal with morals, values, and principles. And that's what I stand on. So after listening to Vlad say that his money hasn't been compromised and that his bottom line hasn't been compromised, that, that that's a quagmire for me. So you don't believe that us black people and friends of yours have the ability to affect your bottom line. So you don't have to apologize. You're not now apologizing because it's based on integrity. You're not apologizing because it's based on the fact that us black people and people who have an issue with you can't affect your bottom line. That's where the code comes in for me, you know? And, and I wouldn't even want to make this statement because this is a person that I called my friend. But when I realized that you willing to compromise me and put me in compromising positions but standing behind you and it's based off money, then we have a different... I, I will die with a friend of mine. If I call you my friend, I'm going to die. I don't care what color you are. You can be green. If I call you my friend, then I'm going to die with you and for you. But I'm not going to sacrifice you if I'm not willing to sacrifice money. So when I had this conversation with him, it was clear to me that if his financial circumstances had been jeopardized or compromised 
by the fact that people wanted him to make an apology, then he would make the apology. Not he's willing to stand on it, lose his money, lose everything, because that's what his moral position is. It's that we don't have enough power to stop his bottom line. That's something I can't co-sign. That's something I don't stand by. I don't, still, I'm, see, the difference between me is I'm never going to say sorry if I'm not sorry. I don't give a fuck if I lose my house, my wife, my kid. I'm never going to say sorry if I'm not sorry because I stand on integrity. That's the person I am. I'm going to die on what I stand on. That's who I am. So that was my position by standing and, and saying, well, brother, if you don't want to say sorry, if you don't feel you sorry, and you say you're willing to deal with whatever comes with it, I'm going to stand by that. I respect that. long as you make sure, long as you make sure that you, you let the world know that you misquoted the minister. But I realize it's not about integrity with him. It's about the fact that his finances haven't been jeopardized. And we as black people don't have the power to, to, um, to jeopardize his finances. So at this point, I can't support that. And I will also ask all other blacks to be on code. If we're going to be on code, let's be on code all the time. Lord Jamal Godfrey have made positions. They can't with them. They're not going up there. I've made a position. Since your, since your, your, your integrity and minds are in conflict, and you're willing to jeopardize a 12-year friendship that I thought was a friendship because it doesn't jeopardize your finances, then I have to respect that. But I also have to make you understand that I can't support you. I can no longer stand beside that as a man because I wouldn't be who I said I was if I stood by that. You know, And in making that decision, I asked everybody else to make that decision. You know, We have to show that we can jeopardize somebody's bottom line or they can continue to sacrifice us. So Vlad has, has taken a position that black people and his black supporters, his black friends, everybody black who has an issue with this situation is expendable, you know? And we can't be on cold because we can't be on cold if we do this sometime, if only some of us do it. We can't be on cold, it's quote unquote unquote on cold if only some people do it. If me, Lord Jamal, and Royce, and, and Godfrey are saying, you know what, we're taking this stand because it's a bigger picture right now. And then everybody else goes up there and act like we didn't do anything. Then we still have not jeopardized his bottom line. We still haven't, and that's not just his, we haven't jeopardized anybody's bottom line. We haven't shown any level of power. We haven't shown that we are able to unite, to come together, to make sure that people don't just sacrifice us. Don't say, well, I'm going to just sacrifice the black people because they don't just, they don't compromise my bottom line. You know, and I'm and, and that's what I'm willing to stand for. I'm not willing to stand on making somebody make an apology that they don't feel is in their heart because they're willing to stand on that. But I'm willing to stand on the fact that you don't believe that we are valuable enough to affect your bottom line. That us, our friendships. The things that we've done for you throughout our town, the people who supported you, the black people who have an issue with saying, you know, you misquoted somebody and maybe you should apologize. Knowing that you would make that apology if some white man that was cutting a check said you need to make that apology, but you won't say you won't make it as a, you won't make that that apology from a suggestion of friends that, you know, was had your back and was willing to put their life on the line for you and took scrutiny from even standing by your side. That's something I can't respect as a man, because. What friendship is to me is something that's real. And that's why I was standing with you because I thought you was willing to deal with that. You had that, you know, you had that position based on integrity, but it wasn't based on integrity. So at this point, I can't stand with that. And I, and you know, and I, and I don't want to stand by anybody who will stand with that because it's not what I represent. It's integrity over income. Now, also about being on code, you know, me and Royce had this conversation. A lot of people are confused. Why are you bringing Eminem into this? You just trying to deflect for Vlad. I wasn't deflecting. I thought everything that Royce said was 100% accurate. He didn't say anything that was wrong. He said a bunch of things that was right. Only thing that we just, we just conflicted was you need an apology. I don't require an apology. I just need you to fix the wrong. So that was our only conflict. And I, we also conflicted as, as a black man, when you hear something come from somebody who you deem as an enemy, even though I deem him as a friend, if you hear something come from a third party that doesn't positively reflect me, don't bring it to the internet before you bring it to me, especially when you have my phone number. 
because that's being on code also. Being on code is saying somebody says something negative about a brother that I know is a stand-up brother. And it reflects him in a negative light. So I'm not going to put that on the internet. What I'm going to do is call that brother and say, hey, this brother said this. And even if I'm still going to put it out, I'm going to give you the benefit of a call first. I'm going to communicate with you because we want us to be shining. We want us to be connected. We want us to be on code, as you said, on code. We want to be on the same exact page. So I would respect, I would expect a brother who is telling me about the code to follow that code, you know? So other than that, we didn't have any conflict, but I also want, want the brother Royce to find now when I put out the situation about Eminem and Mariah Carey, it was brought to my, it was brought to me after because, you know, I don't really, I don't follow the internet beefs and all that shit. I don't really know, but it was somebody that reached out to me and said, you know, it's kind of ironic that Royce would have that position about being on code and Eminem has been calling Mariah a black woman boys for 10 years straight. You know, disrespected her and her husband. You know, even Nick had to get involved. And, and Nick even quoted it saying, you know, it's crazy how a white man can call our queens boys in this day and age. You know, and, and being on code. Now, this is your friend. This is somebody that you call a friend, you know. And I, w I think it would be on code to at least say, yo, brother, you need to stop talking about that woman. You had a you had a, a supposed relationship that she still has never claimed ten years ago. You know that's a black woman. You don't call the whores, but you don't did everything. Just leave it alone. Still in twenty nineteen, you still bringing up that black woman's name as a white man. This is your white friend. So I think if we're gonna be on calls, so I don't want people to say I was trying to deflect. No, call out Vlad because he did some bullshit. Call him out. Yeah, you know, call him out. I'm not saying you wrong. Do it. You require apology. I just require the right to be, regardless of what we knew that the white, this, this brother who was a guest in hip hop, this white man who was a guest in hip hop had to make some type of, has, there has to be some recourse. There has to be some level of, you know, um, reprimand, some level of atonement, something. We both agreed with that. We both did. The difference was we, we disagreed. With the level and what looked like atonement to you. Somebody saying apologize to you or sorry to you was something that you felt comfortable with. For me, I don't need an apology if it's not based in honesty and ain't based in where it comes from. You know, so that's the only thing we differ. But in this situation, you know, when I talked about Eminem and Mariah, it was it was basically to say, Royce, that's your best friend. That's your friend. You're willing to die for him. That's your man. You quoted many a time. This is my friend and I know him and this and that and Marshall's this and he's this. Call him out. Say, bro, stop talking about that black woman. I don't give how long ago you talked about it. If my best friend is with me right now, if he had a relationship with a black woman, a black man, and he calling up bit 10 years later, I'm calling him out. So you know I'm calling a white man out. So this is what it is for me. If we're going to be on cold, let's be on cold all the time. Let's get serious about this code. Let's not do it because we don't like Vlad. Okay, Vlad is an easy, easy target. He said that people call him a culture vote. He's done a bunch of the people are saying it's easy. Vlad is the easiest target in the world. He's a blogger that most people don't like. But Eminem is the loved white boy that raps in even white, black, green. So it's harder for you to call him because this is somebody that's your, this is your friend. Let's not go after the easy targets. Let's walk in the room with the, the, the people that's, that have some level of credibility that are attacking, you know, our black culture. They're doing shit that's outside of the code. And because that's your friend, I think if you're holding people to a standard of keeping people on code and having a moral standard of saying people have to apologize, that you need to have apology, that you, you held me to, Sam Mike, you need to tell me apologize. He didn't apologize because you told him he didn't have to. So if that's your position, which I disagree with, then I want you to have a position saying, I need you to apologize to that woman on, on, because you respect me. You know, I need you to leave that woman alone. I need in person because I respect you as a black man, Royce. I'm going to be on cold because if, if you if, if we being gatekeepers, because right now what it is, is you are somebody who's respected in hip hop. I respect you. You respect it. You have a voice. And you're a black man and you talk eloquently. You know how to do all the things. So you have the unique position to be the person who sets a precedence. You're setting a precedence. You made Lord Jamal and Godfrey have to go back and think 
And when they had to think and they, and they said something, made me have to say to myself, you know what, Mice? This ain't about what you thought it was about. This ain't about integrity. This is about somebody saying that black people aren't valuable enough to apologize to. And you made me have to rethink. So I'm just one. I want to return the favor, brother. I want you to be on the same code. I know that's your friend and this and that. And you're going to defend them because we, we, when you say it's loyal, when you're a man and you say somebody's your friend, then you loyalty. Sometimes it's to a fault because that's how I am. But you can't impose a code that you don't follow. Just doesn't work like that. You can't have pe people can't respect the code that you're issuing that you haven't followed. So that was, it's not to attack you, brother, because in no way, I don't think you was trying to attack me. You know, even though I think it was shit that should have been done differently, I don't think it was an attack on me. I think you were saying some shit that you felt I should be doing. And I'm taking it. I'm taking it, beloved. But I'm also saying, do the same. If we're going to create a code and we're showing people how to treat us, then show people how to treat us from the beginning. That's the top white boy in hip hop. Show him that he can't disrespect a black woman for 10 years. You can't call, you can't keep bringing up see, and all of these things because you mad at, at, at a, 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 a rapper. Talk about the rapper. Talk about him. You know, if we on code because a white man can't do that. That's what you told me. A white man can't feel comfortable enough to be in hip hop and violate us without saying sorry. I agree, beloved. Now I'm just asking you. To abide by the same code that you asking us to abide by.